Today, we contend with gods. We play the one world conquest path in all of TNO on hard mode, a special mode added to the path in the Goering's Wild Ride submod. It'll give our opponents a max buff in addition to the challenges posed by the original mod. And on top of that, it's important that we remember this mod takes place in the 1960s, a time when the nations of the world developed nuclear weapons and an understanding grew that a war between major powers would be a war to end the world. So our quest will be difficult, it may not be possible to do. It may be possible, but not in one video in one week. So take my hand as we finally bring peace to the universe. Or die trying. Also a while ago, an anime submod was released for TNO too, so we'll use that. I'm sure it'll make it even more difficult if we turn all of our enemy nation leaders into anime characters. And also that first song in the video, along with some of the other music I'll use, is from a uh, U4 music mod that's being made into a Hoi4 music mod, so now you can actually use some of the music in my videos in your Hoi4 game, since I'm asked about that a lot. So yeah, um, there's a link to that in the description too. So here's our first challenge, the German Civil War. The unique mechanics of Goering's Path don't start here, but in preparation for those, we need to win this as quick as we possibly can. It's of vital importance importance that we really don't linger in this war. If this lasts over six months, it's an absolute failure. Basically, as Goering, the best thing to do is to take advantage of Prussia, which Prussia is under the control of Heydrich. So, it's kind of free real estate, I guess. So we can easily take that and then move these divisions to somewhere more important. Preferably on the border of Speer here. He um, is rather weak and if we take him out, it'll be easy to attack Bormann from a two fronts. And then we can emerge victorious. Okay, so we're about two and a half weeks into the war. We've cleaned up Prussia and we've made an encirclement in the west. We'll hopefully be able to get some more divisions around their lines, maybe Maybe even encircle them around to here. And this is going to take longer than expected, but we've encircled Bormann and we should be able to finish this soon. Ah, uh, and there it is. About nine months, so overestimate, but still satisfactory. I'm 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 not I'm not too angry. And here's our decision to embrace destiny to enable hard mode and make this a challenge and this cannot be reversed yes i don't plan on reversing it so that's that's good and we will start with our great focus tree it may look small right now but it will grow into one of the largest ones you can imagine we're just going to completely ignore the like africa thing too it's just a waste of time and now we enter the phase where we have to rebuild germany we have to restore it from the ruin that it's currently in and prepare our armies to march east. Our main obstacle will be uh, defeating Russia before it unifies. If Russia completely unifies, it's nigh impossible to defeat them, especially with the full buff they get because of hard mode. So and we're going to have to act quickly here because yeah, we've lost a lot. We only have one ally in the world, Madagascar, which I guess is an um, interesting ally to have. Us and the one island here taking over the world together, us and our best friend. Um, and the Irish have joined us. We are now unstoppable. Germany, Madagascar, and Ireland against the world. Just how I would like it. And here will be our infantry division of choice to hold the front lines. I like the icon. It has like devil horns or I don't know, maybe cat ears? I don't know for sure. Um, the cat ears would be kind of cool. I don't know. Um, either way, very elite divisions, whether it's cat ear helmets or devil horn helmets or maybe like winged hussar helmets. I, I really don't know. And the supply chain is efficient except with anti-air. I switched to a new model of anti-air and apparently now all my divisions rely on the new variant and the old anti-air is unusable, which is unfortunate, but I, I'm sure 
we'll be able to stock up on this new variant and then we can equip all of our uh, amazing elite divisions with at least one anti-air. And I think all these elite divisions use anti-air too. But if that's the price I have to pay for cat divisions, I will gladly pay that. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to modify the template a little. I won't get rid of any of our elite infantry, but I am going to have to remove the anti-air. I think I can afford to put in an anti-tank instead. And then I'm gonna have to remove my nice air assault division too, once I have the army XP for that, just because it's kind of impossible to build very many transport helicopters. Transport helicopters are kind of expensive, so to assign every single regiment a transport helicopter fleet, it's, it's kind of difficult. It'd be really cool if we could do that, it would be quite a flex, but I, I don't think that's um, a possibility right now, unfortunately. And it is time for us to begin. War Plan Zero isn't actually affected by the hard mode. It's kind of pathetically easy anyways, because we're just reclaiming our immediate sphere, like the Netherlands, Slovakia, Poland, Ostland. But once we start War Plan Zero, the clock will start ticking and we will be forced to act. We'll have time limits to conquer stuff, and if we don't conquer stuff in time, our greatest enemy will attack. And our greatest enemy isn't in, like, Burgundy or in Russia or and anywhere, really. Our greatest enemy is within the Reich itself. It's, it's this guy, you know. He's power-hungry, ruthless, envious, cunning, and we will have to stop him at all costs from gaining power, and the way he will gain power is once we declare war and it has gone on for too long, or we fail to conquer what the people demand of us, and the demands won't stop until the entire world is under us. So yeah, it's, it's gonna take quite a while to get there. Okay, now here it is, War Plan Zero. A very simple war plan compared to the other ones. But yeah, as you can see, we now have 365 days to reclaim Denmark, Poland, Slovakia, Oslo, and Bohemia, and crush the Dutch. The Dutch refused our invitation to join us. I was kind of stupid though and forgot to put divisions on their border, but luckily I have these motorized divisions that will just be able to rush in and immediately teleport to their capital. Anyways, it's time for the true challenge to finally begin. We've completed War Plan Zero, and it, it really does have zero difficulty, so it's not really a accomplishment. So now we begin War Plan A, where things actually get difficult, where the hard mode actually will take effect. And we will probably lose, but we'll see how far we can get. And there we go, we have a little over a year to conquer England, Switzerland, Scandinavia, the Balkans, Ukraine, and Moscow. If I remember correctly though, I think Switzerland might be the most difficult, just because they have this giant wall. They have perfected the art of being neutral. Now I just need to see if any of our generals have the fortress buster trait, because that trait may be the only way to get through the Swiss level 8 mountain forts when Switzerland has a max buff. Maybe there might be some other way, but there's no paratroopers and... Tiano. Ah, yes, I found one, a fortress buster. Their attack stat is kind of dismal, but we'll take what we can get for today. We have to break into those Swiss mountains somehow. So we'll get our mountaineers, we'll make our marines into mountaineers too. We will never use marines. I guess we should probably make these mountaineer divisions good too, just so they can actually break through. Just put some nice artillery in there, they'll get a great boost to mountains. Attack plus 30. But yeah, here is how we're really going to do it, because if we have the fortress buster trait, we can get siege artillery which gives us extreme damage to the fort, then our mountaineers will be able to do extra damage to the division in the mountain tile, and then maybe we'll be able to get through. And now the impending economic collapse mechanic begins. It'll limit our time in every war, so we can't take things slowly, we can't just bomb their factories and slowly wait for them to attrition or anything. We have to act fast, so yes, we will attack this tile here, we'll start our siege artillery and we'll 
break in, maybe? And this all kind of feels pointless now because I talked all so long about getting the mountaineers and getting the fortress buster, but you know, just, just some tanks just rolled up through the mountains and forts and just broke through, so tanks are pretty good, I guess. Okay, and we won. At least the siege artillery was useful in the final battle we had, so... You know, I, I don't feel like I wasted all that time and thought and uh, planning. And now we will invade the Moscow autonomy because the easiest way to deal with Scandinavia is to take out Moscow, invade Finland, and then just kind of roll around Scandinavia so you don't have to deal with this river crossing or sea crossing there. And the organization of free nations has taken out our RKs down in Africa, which is kind of unfortunate, and Italy is going democratic, which is kind of unfortunate. This is exactly what happened in my last Goering playthrough, so it's gonna be kind of sad, but um, we'll, we'll be able to manage, I'm sure, even in hard mode. So yeah, now we're going after Hungary, and then we'll go after Romania and Crimea, and then start going into Scandinavia and finish it off with Britain. We still have another 221 days. Oh no, I, I, I forgot or didn't realize that it had this effect here. Um, we should have maybe done some of our focus tree for that. Yeah, it's gone now, but... Um, and our Chad tanks and Catboy infantry will now invade Hungary. Well, once a Slovakia is called in, should be very easy. Our, our 12 tanks are gonna go up against one cavalry division that only has three to five cavalry, so I'm guessing four cavalry in a recon company. Not a very impressive Hungary. I, I expected more. Yeah, we're gonna be in Budapest, and uh, instantly in Budapest. I guess if you guys had a navy, Horthy would probably have made it really good, but since you don't, um, just have this dismal, really sad land army. <laughs> yeah, look at that buff. They, they still, they still can't do anything. Our helmets are too cute. They can't contend with us. And we took our navy back from Donuts, so we'll move that over to the English Channel to prepare to invade England. And now we're invading socialist Serbia in an effort to unite all the Balkans, which is what everyone in the Balkans wants, and we will now learn from the Swiss and gain Fortress Buster on some more generals, which is convenient, I guess. I don't really think we're gonna go up against anybody ever that's going to have lots of forts like that again, but nice to have that just in case the US builds a giant wall on their southern border. And Finland is kind of a joke, but... We are running out of time to conquer Scandinavia and England, only a hundred days left to conquer Sweden, Norway, and England. So yeah, we have, um, 19 days to defeat the British. I'm sure we'll be able to do it. 19 days is plenty of time to invade England, I, I think, maybe. Um... <laughs> Uh, easy. We had five days left to spare. There was nothing to worry about there. Plenty of time. We had 18 days or 19 days to invade England and we get 244 days to invade Scotland. And Scotland has been defeated. I kind of forgot that one of the mechanics of Scotland was that you had to take every single tile to capitulate them, but we still won. I totally didn't spend 
almost all of that timer trying to cap them. No, no, definitely not. And we are now being forced to commence War Plan B. Last time I did War Plan B, I almost lost invading Siberia and I had a, had other nightmares. So I, I don't know how bad this is gonna be on hard mode. At least I've made really good divisions. Last time I think I was just using like terrible divisions and just trying to rush victory points with helicopters. This time I have good divisions, good tanks, and probably still just gonna rush all the victory points with the helicopters. So yep, we'll begin. Once we do War Plan B, we'll lose all of our focuses for War Plan A, kind of like how we lost all of our focuses for War Plan Zero when we started A. But I've done all the ones that I want to do. And now we have several options. Valblau, which always is an amazing conquest. This War Plan is always perfect. I would like to invade Italy first though, of course. I would like to get to them before where they join the OFN, but that's kind of impossible. You can't actually invade Italy first in War Plan B, you have to invade the others, and then you have to do Italy last, so. We have to hurry before Russia unites, we have to hurry before Italy joins the OFN, we have to hurry before Spain collapses, and here it is, fall rot earlier than I expected. I forgot that if you do this path here, they're just allowed to declare on you whenever they want, or I guess they get an event to, yeah. They decided to attack first, so this is our first defensive war. <laughs> we'll still win it very easily, but um, it's interesting. Oh, I hate it when this happens. Stupid Russian warlords, that they have these skyscrapers and fireworks now? How did they get skyscrapers? We were bombing them for decades. Are they all united? Yeah, they're, they're all united. What is this madness? Thing is, even though they're all in a faction, I don't know if they'll actually put all their divisions on my border because they're, they're all kind of selfish. I guess three out of four of them are actually authoritarian communist. I don't know what the odds of that are, but. We invaded Russia once and broke it apart. We invade Russia twice and it puts itself back together. All Russia against All Reich makes for a better story. I, I agree. Anyways, West Russia capitulated and the Euro military district got a lot encircled. So I feel like things are gonna be fine now. See, and with this invasion, the militarists love us. They love that we're doing cool stuff like invading Russia. See, this is the power of the helicopter. The helicopter is the best unit in TNO because it moves incredibly fast, so fast that no one can even see it because it's a moving at the speed of light. It's very fast though. Um, the enemies just can't stop it. It's just too good. It's gonna capture like every victory point before they can even get one division to the front line. If they even have a division left. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, they only have three divisions. <laughs> and I'm too lazy to invade these countries here. So I'm just going to put a garrison order on them and declare war on them one at a time. I'm sure that will be effective. Okay, and now we're going to invade Spain. We can't really get to Brittany and France because the Republic of Brittany is in the OFN, so we, will, we just have to invade them by sea, but yeah, that, that, that's going well. So now we are invading Turkey. They're the last major country we'll invade before we invade an actually a difficult opponent, the Italians. Maybe the most difficult enemy we'll have to face since fighting the Swiss or invading Britain in 19 days. I guess the Russia war was kind of hard in how much time it wasted. Like, I don't know if we'll be able to conquer Italy in 68 days. We may have to take that hit to influence and loyalty, eh? And Europe shall be dominated by Germany. Defeated states shall be nothing more than colonies. Thank you, Mussolini, wise words. It looks like things are going well. We are just breaking through the Alps. That is kind of making me sad. I was hoping the hard mode was gonna be hard. Well, I guess we are fighting against Italy. The Italian incompetence is making the max buffed Piano Italians, extremely weak. I guess honestly, they're kind of doing okay now. Very, they're not doing like extremely well, but we're losing quite a few battles now. And we took Rome with our helicopters, so 
Yeah, they're, they're already halfway to capitulating. Oh, perfect. Now these are good borders. This is, this is very nice. This is much better than last time. I can't believe that this is going so much better on hard mode. I guess, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. I guess, you know, the experience is more important than how buffed the AI is. If we wanted, we could go straight to War Plan C now. I'll, I'll finish up a few focuses though. I'll threaten the Japanese a little. And here we are with one focus to end it all. Well, many focuses stem from it, but generally just the one focus here, you know. Or Plan C. We get to finally deal with Burgundy. We've jumped over a notable player right in our vicinity. Europe is all ours except for them, the French, and Brittany, who's in the OFN. And there's a good reason for this, because they have nuclear weapons. They have nuclear weapons, the US has nuclear weapons, Japan has nuclear weapons. If we didn't capitulate Italy fast enough, they would have had nuclear weapons. So yeah, this will be fun, very fun. So yeah, we'll declare war and, um, We'll have to move very quickly if we hope to survive. This um, submod does enable decisions to disable the new core, but disabling it is what cowards do. Okay, here we go. Our movements must be swift and decisive. These tanks will cut through to Ost Paris. We'll have one lone tank kind of take some victory points down towards the south. Uh, okay, they're, they're 100% towards capitulation. We've captured Ost Paris and Paris, and we have um, an attack warning and the ultimate demand. They'll capitulate in, uh, in like 11 hours though. We've kind of won, I think. I think that was a very close call, but I think we pretty much won there. We can just hope that we captured all the silos before they could fire anything off, right? Oh. And this isn't even because of the hard mode. I think this is just because in that last game we controlled all of the stuff in the west. Okay, I think we got it this time, especially if we can capitulate them within four hours. That would be... oh. Hmm, I think they may have patched this. Okay, now this is the most ideal position. I don't think it can get better than this, so we'll make sure that we're on a new day. Okay, go ahead with all divisions into all victory points available, at least, well, at least enough victory points to capitulate them. I hate how they're crushing my dreams of taking over the world without causing a nuclear war in a mod that's made to showcase how, you know, wars like this are kind of pointless when they're just gonna lead to nuclear war. And the funny thing too is that if you play Himmler's path in the mod, this is exactly what he wants too, because he's basically insane trying to take over various things and influence things around the world and building a bunker system so that eventually he'll start a nuclear war and then those in Ost Paris will be the only ones to survive. So kind of by doing this, we just let him win. But yep, I guess this is as far as we'll get. Because I assume they've added this to Japan and the US too, so you can't just do the, the funny thing that I did last time. It was pretty funny. I wouldn't be surprised if they just saw that and then added this in to add a foolproof measure that you can't do that. Anyways, I will do some research and see if there is some tricky way to get around it. Maybe there's a possibility. If you know of any possibility, let me know. I guess there's the possibility of disabling it, but I refuse to, so... We'll see. I, I'm, I'm very stubborn about that. So I, I will find a way to get around it without disabling anything. And then maybe we can finish off Goering hard mode. But it was fun invading Italy and Russia on hard mode and all the other places like Switzerland imposed a unique challenge, but I guess my tanks were so good that Mountaineers didn't matter. And it was interesting though. Very, very interesting. <laughs>